Does the Bible condone rape? Short answer? Nah. Longer answer? No. It's God. It's God. It's God. It's God. It's God. This is one of those popular accusations and misconceptions that's usually ran amongst groups like Muslims or atheists, agnostics, or uh, those those people that try to claim they're somewhere in the middle. They say, I'm not religious. I'm more so spiritual. Yeah. They try to use Deuteronomy 22 verse 28 to say that the Bible condones, and for the sake of the video so it doesn't get flagged, we're going to use the word grape as a substitute. Grape, okay? Just follow me. Just stick with me. I know. Sensitive. I know. Just work with me, okay? So they, they say that that the Bible condones grape. It, it, it forces a victim of grape to marry her grapist. Now that can't be loving. That can't be fair. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the context here and let's actually jump straight into it. And let's see if this is actually true. Does the Bible condone grape and force the victim to marry her grapist? Let's see what it says here. And we're going to use the NIV version because this is the version that a lot of these people use to try to say that the Bible clearly and explicitly says that grape is okay. So we're going to use the NIV version just for this. But if out in the country, a man happens to meet a young woman, pledged to be married, and grapes her, only the man who has done this shall die. Uh-oh. Do nothing to the woman. She has committed no sin deserving death. This case is like that of someone who attacks and murders a neighbor. For the man found the young woman out in the country, and though the betrothed woman screamed, there was no one to rescue her. Now, see, we here we have a clear example of a victim of grape. And it says that the woman has done nothing wrong, but the man who has graped her shall be put to death. God takes this so seriously that he compares this type of violation to murder. Grape in God's eyes is, is just like murdering an innocent, an innocent person. That's how God sees it. So obviously here in the context, we already see what happens in the situation of grape. But what happens when we continue reading? Let's see, because now we're going to get to the point of contention. Verse 28, if a man happens to meet a virgin, who is not pledged to marry to be married and grapes her and they are discovered huh he shall pay her father 50 shekels of silver he must marry the young woman for he has violated her he can never divorce her as long as he lives there you go boom bada boom 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 you see there christians case closed your bible right there explicitly says that the victim of grape has to marry her grapist. How can a loving God condone such a thing, condone such an action? No, this is not what's taking place here. Matter of fact, pay attention to the wording here. It says here, if a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married and grapes her and they are discovered, huh? And they are discovered. Now, I didn't use it in the earlier context, in the, in the form of grape. So why here? Why is it that they have to be discovered here for certain something to happen? Well, it's because it's, it's really the simple answer is this, that the NIV got this wrong. The word is not grape, because actually, even when you compare the two words there, these are two different Hebrew words that's being used in verse 25 versus verse 28. Two different Hebrew words are being used. The word in verse 28 that's being used is tapas, which also means to manipulate or to seduce. The NIV got this wrong. Let me just show you guys so you guys don't think that I'm lying here. When we go to the Strong's Concordance, we look at the breakdown of the word, and it means to manipulate, i.e. seize, to lay hold of, to capture, to catch. So was she caught by force or was she caught by manipulation? Was she seized by manipulation? And actually, the Bible sheds light on this. 
especially when you take into account what Deuteronomy is, the book of Deuteronomy, the word Deuteronomy itself, it literally means the second law. Take a look at this. When we look at the word, the etymology of Deuteronomy, it means the second law. So what Deuteronomy is doing is it is recounting some of the events that have taken place when it comes to the Israelites. And they are it's recounting the laws and the commandments that were given by God himself. So then where would we find this original law? Where would we find the first time this law is brought up? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. If we go to Exodus chapter 22 and we pull this up, we see where the original law was stated. Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. This is where the original law is that Deuteronomy is repeating. It says, if a man seduces a virgin who is not pledged to be married and sleeps with her, he must pay the bride price and she shall be his wife. Do you guys see that? This is the, the original law. Deuteronomy 22 is just repeating it and expounding on it. It has nothing to do with forced seizure, but it has to do with seduction. So the first part, verses 25 to 27 in Deuteronomy 22, that's dealing with grape. Verses 28 and 29, that's a different convert. That's a different topic. It's not dealing with grape anymore. Now it's dealing with fornication. It's dealing with seduction, which is why it said, and they be discovered. Matter of fact, let's actually put translation side by side. When we put translation side by side, let's put the the let's put the NIV version right next to the KJV. All right? Left side is NIV, right side is KJV. If a man finds a young woman on the right side who is a virgin, who is not betrothed, and he seizes her and lies with her, and they are found out. Look, they are found out. They're found together. They are found together. Then the man who lay with her shall give her, shall give to the young woman's father 50 shekels of silver. Sound familiar? It's just repeating what we read in Exodus 22. And she shall be his wife because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to divorce her all of his days. So this is dealing with fornication. A man actually seduced a woman, seized her by manipulation, seized her by seduction. They slept together outside of marriage. And because of that, because she's not a virgin anymore, especially in these days, her value goes down. No one's going to want to marry her. She's, she's already been defiled, right? And so because of that, even in light of them committing fornication, God makes it a way to where the woman is still taken care of. You can't just smash and pass. If you slept with her, you now have to marry her and take care of her. You can't just leave her out to dry. You have to pay the bride price. You have to marry her and you can't divorce her all of your days. God, in light of her humiliation, gives her dignity and protection. This is how holy and just our God is. In light of these people coming together, committing sin. So no, the Bible does not condone grape. Matter of fact, the punishment for grape is death. God equates grape with murder, murdering an innocent person. So for anyone who's trying to say that the Bible condones grape and that God is not loving, ask them, what, 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 what are we doing here, man? What, what, come, come, come on, man. Oh!